we're going to revisit a cassette deck I looked at a number of years ago where I replaced the belt with one of those thin, crappy eBay specials. I'm going to try the, one of those new Amazon 4mm belts and see if we get any different results. So we're going to do it before and after comparison of the flutter from playing a 3 kilohertz tape. So let's get started. You guys remember my old Pioneer CTF 500 cassette deck from a few years ago when I put a new belt on it and I ended up with one of those little thin crappy belts which results in about this much wound flutter. Yeah, pretty pathetic, isn't it? So, what we're going to do today is I'm going to try one of those new Amazon belts on this one. This cassette deck has a history. This was the first cassette deck that I ever owned. I had reel-to-reel -reel prior to this, but I bought this cassette deck from a friend who updated to a, I think it was a CTF-1250. He bought the top of the line high-end, real expensive one, and he sold me this one. And I think I paid, well, this is going back to the early 80s. Uh, I may have paid him 25 or $50 for it. I think 25 bucks. He literally gave it away because he had upgraded to his new one that he paid a lot of money for at the time. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away a number of years ago. Um, he was in, involved in a boating accident. Dumb idiot was out on his pleasure craft without wearing a life jacket and with no disconnect, no wrist strap, which is really idiotic. But he was out cruising around in his boat and uh, he hit a wave or something and uh, it knocked him overboard out in the middle of the lake and his boat just kept on going without him and he had no life jacket, unfortunately. And uh, I ran into his dad, he used to just live up the street from me, he'd moved, he'd moved out of the area. And I ran into his dad and his dad told me about it, it was quite the shock. But anyway, this is a tape deck I can remember him from because he was a good friend that I went to school with. And uh, I'm hanging on to, this is the one I, I changed the meters, I, I, I mean stupid me, I should have left the original meters in. But uh, everything at the time was, it was all on, you know, everybody wanted digital meters. So I built these. These were RAE kits from RAE Electronics out by BCIT out in Burnaby. I bought two of them, the peak meter kits. And these were like for rack mount. And you could actually set them up so that they could sit vertical. If you turn around this display, it's vertical or horizontal, depending on how you built them, like or how you put the front panel on. Anyway, um, say I built this when I was young, and uh, I forget what... Forget what year I got this, but this the, the deck itself was only a, was only a, a couple years old when I got it from. It would have been uh, early '80s, I'm gonna say. I don't know the exact year, but it was early '80s. Anyway, this machine has tons and tons of hours. I used to use this machine constantly for making mixtapes. In fact, I'm surprised that the head hasn't worn out on it because this thing's had this has had hundreds upon hundreds of tapes recorded on it over the years that I used it until I got better equipment but I, I used to use it and see it's marked tape 2 because I, this was a playback deck because I could I could cue it up we t always kept the, the front covers off these things right so you, you cue a song up and then when it stops and you, you, you cue it back a bit so that when you released it it would start playing immediately so deck like this was used for um, for cueing music or even if you didn't have the door open you play it until the song starts, and then you pause it, open it up, roll it back a bit, put it back in, play, pause, and then when you want to cue, when you're mixing music, you can make it start instantly. That was always something that I liked about this deck. Anyway, that's beside the point. It sounds like crap now because it's got that little thin two millimeter belt. We're gonna put a proper belt in, one of those Amazon ones, and see how much better it makes this one sound. And if it sounds a lot better, then I'll be convinced that those Amazon belts actually are the real thing and that I could recommend them because I've done two decks with them and they both have sounded pretty good. This will be the third one. We'll see how this one sounds. Of course, the tragic thing about the, the friend with the, with the boat story was that uh, 
he always was the one that was telling me. He would say to me, I don't know why you ride motorcycles. You're going to get killed. And here's the guy that, say, was critical of me riding motorcycles. And there he is, out on a boat without a life jacket. Anyway, um, remember this is not too bad. I just have to take the uh, bracket off the flywheel. I don't even have to take the deck apart on this one. I can just pull the back panel off. The bracket comes off. And uh, I think I can get enough clearance that I can slip the new belt over top of it because there's, there's lots of room on this one to do it. It's got three belts on this, four belts. There's a belt for the auto stop down here. There's a counter belt over here. There's a play uh, or, or fast forward rewind belt here and for the play idler obviously and then there's uh, the main the main capstan belt which is the one that we're going to change out so this tape deck is from january 1979 and i probably bought it the next year because it was when i bought it from my buddy i was uh, still in high school i think i was in grade 11 uh or grade 12 no grade 11 i think so it would have been it would have been 1980 or 1981 when i bought this from him because he didn't have it very long and then he, he upgraded because he wanted something better. So I'm just looking to see the easiest way to do this. Take out the belt, take out the bracket. I may be able to get enough clearance to slip the belt over top of the pulley without having to actually remove all of this stuff. And that would be great if I can. These little small screwdrivers are great to get into these really tight spaces. And they're magnetic. How cool is that, huh? Okay, so is that going to give me enough? Yeah, I can probably do that. I can take this belt off here. Okay, if I take this belt off, there's enough clearance here that I can get this belt out of the way. Now I should be able to slip off this other belt, which is the wrong belt, pass it over top of the pulley, like that, and if I pull this bracket out enough, I should be able to get clearance at the back of the, uh, of the flywheel here that I can just slip the belt off. And around. Just like that. All right, let's find one that's uh, approximately this size. I'm sure there is one in the pack of Amazon belts that's going to be the proper width to uh, drive this one without driving the wow and flutter through the roof like we had with the previous belt. The closest belt I have is a little bit smaller than this other one, slightly. I don't know if that'll make a difference or not, but it will stretch a bit, but. Uh, it's, diameter wise it's a little bit smaller and that's the biggest one that came in the pack so this is going to be, have to be the one that I try and this is the ugliest of the three there was three of them the same size and this is the ugliest of them all so we'll see how this one how this fits and how it stretches out and how it sounds might be in for a surprise it might sound like crap and it might sound fantastic but the uh, only way to find out of course is to actually put the belt on the unit and try it out and see exactly how bad it is or how good it is 
and uh, we'll find out pretty quick here. So that's why I don't want to spend a lot of time tearing this thing down. I just want to do it as quickly as I can because it's my deck. It's not one that I use. It's just one that I would like to see how these cheap belts, because these were not expensive, these belts. I think I only paid like, I don't know, 15 or $20 for a pack of them. So it, they were not expensive. But it'd be interesting to see how they perform compared to those other eBay belts. So we'll fish this down in behind the, the bearing there. And get it around the bottom of the pulley. We can reach it here. There it is on this side. I was working at a customer's house last week and we called an electrician in because they needed a needed an outlet in their closet so as the guy's working there he's working on a live circuit right 120 volts and he keeps jumping <laughs> and I said what's the matter are you getting a jolt he goes oh just par for the course he says I get uh, on an average day jolted two or three times and the guy didn't even flinch at getting jolted with 120 volts. Although 120 volts really isn't going to hurt you, right? It shouldn't hurt you. Because he wasn't grounded anywhere else. He was just getting it in his hands. But it was, it was funny watching him work. He could jump. So, yeah, you jolt yourself there? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's several times a day. <laughs> Okay, let's get this belt here. I'm gonna grab it with my hand here and reach in with the the dental pick and pull it around the other way. Like that. Now we'll go around. Excellent. Got a twist in it here. We'll just take that twist out. Twist out of the belt, get the other belt in place. I always like these tape decks where you don't have to take the, the whole chassis out, where you can fish belts around without disassembling. There we go. Okay, that's in place. Let's get that screw back in, and then we can test this one in. See if I made an improvement. Probably have to reset the speed because um, the belt is a little different tension. So See the 
belt turns nice now, the capstan flywheel turns nice. Let's apply power and see how bad it sounds. Okay, we're going to take a listen to this. Well, I think that certainly sounds a lot better. And speed-wise, it's pretty darn close. I've got it. It was a little bit slow, but I brought it up a bit. Put the three kilohertz tone on. Well, I can still hear a bit of flutter. I don't know if it was as bad as it was before. I guess we'll have to listen to the other file. But I don't think it sounds as bad as it was with the other belt. I'm going to uh, let this thing play. The belt that's in here, as you can see, I picked the worst condition. Like, there was three belts the same size, and they were all smaller than this one, so it is quite tight, but I didn't have quite a big enough belt. Um, these belt kits tend to come with smaller belts, and some real small belts that I think were quite useless. But um, it uh, it's not certainly not going to slip, but I think uh, uh, it's, it's a little too tight for what it should be. But um, it's all I had. I think it is sounding better. Um, so say I picked the, the worst looking belt of the batch. You can see, looks like it's got fold marks in it. That's because it was crammed in the bottom of the bag. So we'll see. But I'm going to uh, pop a tape in it, let it play for a while, and then uh, we'll do a test recording on it and see how this uh, machine sounds. You know, missing the music, Music-wise, it sounds pretty good, considering what we have here, which was a low-end deck. This was not by any means a high-end deck of its day. But it's not sounding too bad at all. It's certainly sounding a lot better than it was, I think, with that other belt. But we'll, we'll listen to that. We'll listen to that tone again from the other belt. Okay, I'm gonna let this thing play. Let it run for a bit because they say it hasn't run for a while and then uh, that'll work the belts in a bit and then we'll do a test recording. I don't know, I think those LED peak meters actually don't look too bad. I wish I still had the original analog ones. The analog ones, the lights had burned out on them. And if I remember correctly, the lights were internal to the meter, so you had to actually take the meter apart to... Uh, and I think one of the meters was stuck, is what it was. Uh, one of the, the lights had burned out and one of the meters was stuck. And back then I didn't know that you could just take the meters apart and adjust them to make them work. So anyway, I, I changed them out to the LED meters. If nothing else, it makes it a very unique tape deck. I don't think you'll find any other Pioneer CTF 500s with a, a pair of RAE kit meters in it. RAE was a big electronics supplier out in Burnaby, right behind BCIT for those old enough to remember it. There was RAE, there was Active Components, there was RID Electronics, there was RP Electronics, there was Lee's Electronics, Main Electronics, and LA Vera, another one. And now there's only two of them left. RP Electronics out in South Burnaby and Lee's Electronics down on Fraser Street in Vancouver. Those are the only two left for, for the component dealers and they don't have the inventory that they used to have. But uh, they used to have all kinds of cool little kits that you could build. And say I would have built this when I was in high school because I think it was about 1980 when I got this thing, so it would have been like grade 11 at the time, and that's when I built these. I probably built these meters as a project in my electronics class, 
Uh, the soldering looks pretty pathetic. It's almost embarrassing. Parts tacked on the top. Capacitor, that's the input cap, tacked to the top. I think it's because there wasn't enough clearance between the two boards. They're sandwiched together. There wasn't enough clearance to put them like that. So I uh, stuck it on top and probably this transistor blew out. I had to replace it. So I stuck it on top rather than pull the meters out to do the job right. But anyway, that's an embarrassment from when I was like, I don't know, probably 16, maybe 17, but I built this thing. Anyway, we're going to let it play for a bit. It's not sounding too bad at all, and we'll do a test recording, and I'll, like before, I'll play the test recording back into the camera. So let this play for a bit, and then we'll uh, be back to do a recording. Okay, we're going to do a recording on this now. Let's select my track if I can. My remote control. That's not the one I want. I want track 66, and my remote control is not working. <laughs> remote control. There we go. So we're making a recording now. When this was done, we're gonna play it back right into the camera and see how it sounds. Recording it in is a chrome tape in Dolby B. So we'll check back once the recording's made. All right, let's uh, plug the camera directly in to the output of the tape deck and listen to it directly.
there it is. It, uh, I think, uh, is sounding not too bad at all. We'll just put that last, we'll do the tape again. We'll put the, to the tone tape in and just see how it's, uh, if I can get this on properly. Take a listen to the, the, uh, the tone one more time just to see if things have leveled off a bit now that it's run for a little while. I can make it have on flutter. That's sounding a little better than before. How's our speed holding up now that it's run for a bit? Yeah, we're down a bit. Let's bring that up. Alright, I guess that's about it. That's all we can do on this one. It's not sounding too bad. Considering how old it is. Which is about 42 years old. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.